Good morning, Remy. Good morning, Breck. How's it going? Did you get did you get your kayaks out mm. to get across your pond? Mm. The water receded. Um, no kayaks necessary. Mud boots, lots of them we went through, but uh, yeah, water's receded. It's not back to normal yet, but it will be someday soon. I mean, you guys got like a lot of rain for Arizona in, in a small period of time. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was hot. We were told that it was more rain than they've received since 2006. So that's, that's a while. They're not yeah. used to this kind of rain and um, they're not prepared for this kind of rain either because we would have loved to pump it off of our property. But once we trenched, like we trenched a path out to canals and that worked for a, quite a while, a couple hours for sure, until it didn't. I've got a hair on my mouth. Gosh, I hate that. Um, because it filled, the canals were so full with water. Yeah, it just like flows back in. Yeah, so then it started reversing and coming back in. So we were trying to close all the trenches. Um, through all of this though, because I feel like, well, you've been in like a mother nature disaster with livestock. You know, I kind of go through a roller coaster of emotions. I get all whipped up. I get all whipped up for a minute and then I'm like, there's nothing I can do. God's going to help us get through this. You know, I'm praying. I'm writing in my prayer book frequently. And I, then you decide that there is nothing that you can do. So you need to go to the house and have a nap. And then you get all whipped up again when you get back from your nap. And it's kind of, you just get exhausted. But what it got me to thinking is, you know, all of these activists, Remy, like, and some of the things that they say towards the agricultural community and um, how they think that we treat our livestock and animals. I would love for them to come and spend a day with any farmer, rancher, care person of animals, a, a normal day, a, and then a day where it's like this, because they definitely come before us. And that's why a person gets all whipped up is because they're watching their livestock, like stand in mud or, you know what I mean? Like, we were doing everything that we could thankful for so many amazing people. Um, some horses did get to go to Shell Ray Pearson's. Is that right? Pearson's. Pearson's. Yeah. Pearson's. Um, but you know, she didn't have enough room and thankfully it is the desert depending on where your pens are. It dries out pretty fast. So usually by the time know. in a situation like that, usually by the time you have it, set up for them to go somewhere else you're through the worst of it it takes you longer to plan for them to go somewhere than uh, than the water stays yeah but you know what i mean with the animal activists or whatever i, I do mean, and I it's it's uh we used to have a pasture that had um they were doing like a environmental study on it and they would bury these buckets and they'd have to come collect whatever animals fell into the bucket every day and I just remember thinking like that's such, like, I understand that you're trying to get like a head count on what's on the, on this ground, yeah. but it seemed like such a bad, uh, such a bad system. And then we had another friend who, um, worked for, he was an attorney for a big ranch down here and he was at a meeting and a bunch of the younger guys now, they'd be a generation or two older than me now. But so their fathers had told them, you know, you need to talk to these environmentalists because Right now, they're the guys that are hiking out here and they're riding their bikes and they're doing all the things. And at least they're spending time on your property because in two generations, which is where we're at now, you're going to have environmentalists that have never set foot on these ranches. On and are these, advocating for something. Yeah, that all these conservancies because they've never been there. And if you alienate yourself, and unfortunately, agriculture kind of did that for a long time. They weren't very open and it was their way or no way. And 
I think that's why you see so many advocates now, right? Like A G V O C A T E, yeah, yeah, yeah. because they're trying to bridge that gap because people want to know where their food comes from. They want to know all these things. And, you know, for generations, you've told them that they didn't need to know. And now we're in a whole new, it's a whole new world. And you're, the ag industry Period. is very much misunderstood. And the other yeah. thing is like, I, this is what I tell people when we have discussions, even if you look at it from a, if you're going to say that what we're doing in the long run is not moral and all these things. So even if you're looking at it from that way that we don't care and the, animals are the only way to make money. I'm like, okay, then that even proves my point more. If they're the only way for me to make money. You're going to take really good care I'm of I'm going to take really good care of that investment. So if you think that I don't care about my animals, which is not true, but if you really think that, well, I'm going to do the best of everything I can to make the most money, which is not starving them, which is not pillaging the land. It's not doing any of that. It's taking really good care of your land to make sure that it's regenerative and successful for the future. And, uh, okay. They don't really have an answer for that one. When you come back with that one, because there's no moral high ground in that. There's no real answer for, yeah, I got to take care of my cows. I got to take care of my horses. I got to take care of my land. I got to do the best of everything for everyone. So, yeah. Well, as I was trudging around out in the mud, um, and when I was at one of my high anxiety points, I'm just going through my head. I'm like, you know what? I wish these people would be out here with me right now so they could see like I'm anxiety ridden because I feel so stinking terrible for my livestock that's mm -hmm. standing here in mud and there's not a lot that can be done about it except wait for it to dry, move things around <laughs> as you can. But um, yeah, and I would have to think that I'm not alone when it's like you guys, when, when you're out there doing I, I hate the word sacrifice because I don't feel like we sacrifice. I mean, I don't feel like this life is a sacrifice. We want to do this. So, but I mean, when you're out on your ranch and things aren't going as planned, they don't ever see those moments. And you have to think about that, I guess. For me, no, I do. You do. And it's like, even with the feedlot stuff that happened from the heat and humidity this summer, you know, it's so easy. So why didn't they just move them? I don't know. I don't know how you move 10,000 head for a heat storm you never, that, you know, you didn't have enough to, warning for where it was like the Atlas blizzard. There's all sorts of stuff that goes really wrong. And it's very easy when you've never dealt with that amount of livestock to be like, I'll oh, just move them. Just put them in a barn. Just do yeah. this. And you're like, super wish it was that easy. Yeah, it's not that easy. Just like us. I mean, they told us a trace of rain. I don't know where we would have went with everything. We, well, I told you we had a semi load of cattle that had to stay at the, the sale barn from Friday until... We just got them last night because the sale barn couldn't have them anymore, but the semi couldn't come into our property because he was going to get stuck and there was no other way to load them, offload them to us. Um, where was I going with that? I don't even remember so much. I don't well, know. Well, it's just because you had a traumatic week. Is it? Yeah. I can't, I can't remember. <laughs> ah, who knows? But it's all... It's funny how in the moment it's, you're all like, whatever, but it, it passes pretty quickly and just got to remember that. So, well, you know, you do, and you have to remember, like you, you can't control the weather. Mm. Yeah. That's what I was going to say. And, it, and, we, and in agriculture, you really can't control the weather and it has a yeah. drastic effect one way or the other on what you do. We were and told it was going to be a trace of rain. We were not told it was going to be three and a half inches, which we can handle a trace. Well, but, we always, I always joke because like when I look at my weather app, if it says like 30 to 40 percent, like we might get some drizzle. If it says like 60 to 75 percent, we'll get nothing. And then if it says like 100 percent, well, we're going to get some rain, but we're not really sure. But I'll tell you like those days where it, like where we got all that rain, it was like 60 to 70 percent for like maybe a half an inch. <laughs> yeah. So, um. Marky, how is she doing? I don't think, I know that they got outrun yesterday in the second or the high, I don't, they got outrun in one of the go rounds yesterday. And I think she ropes today and tomorrow. But um, I, if you follow her on social media, she's been living her best life so far in Vegas. So awesome. You know, it was, uh, we went to the NFR yesterday. We watched, or we went the day before and yesterday. We watched some of the team roping yesterday. It was, um, 
went to Vegas in December. It's cold. It was cold. It was really cold. It's cold for me. I bought a very heavy jacket. So. Like what's cold? It was like 50 degrees and blowing. That's that cold. Wind. It is cold. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, no, she, I think she's got some more shots at it. And, you know. Well, she was a super fun interview. Um, I loved it. I mean, I think what I love the most about her is that just meeting her or interviewing with her. She's a super good person. Like, yes, from a heart standpoint. And I love her hustle. I mean, the fact that she's got all the things going that she's got going, it's. And, she, and she's hilarious on top of all of those. Things. Yeah. <laughs> like just a good human period. Yeah. Um. So my sister listened to it and she sent me a picture afterward and I sent it to you, but um, because of Marky loving her cracks, there was a little there at the back number ceremony, it was Hazel, Haley Kinzel walking down the carpet and there's a little girl just dreamily staring back at Haley and she's got a little cute black dress on and cracks and um she sent it to me and she's like, oh, this reminds me of Marky. Like Crocs for any occasion, man. Yes, yes. Crocs for life. No yeah. Life. Um, on another note, um, because it is end of our week, one of our really good friends, uh, is Reed Oftedal, he's a bull rider. This was his very first NFR. Uh, we're really good friends with his wife's family, his wife and her family, the Simonson family. They're from Minnesota. Um, Reed got, I don't know if you've seen that or not, but Reed took a pretty good shot to the head and he is in the hospital ICU. I mean, I think that he is showing improvement, but he's got a really long road of recovery ahead of him. Um, he, there is a GoFundMe page for him. I've also got Courtney's Venmo. Uh, I know that the family, they're a young family. They've got two littles. I know that they could probably use some support prayers for sure. So if you have seen this or know what I'm talking about or feel the need to um, help them, please reach out to us and we can get you that information. Otherwise, just go search Read Oftedal on social media. It's pretty much all over there. So, um. But that was it was a bad there's been a couple bad wrecks honestly and there was almost a wreck on a lighter that I'll, and you know there's almost wreck every night in the grand entry i, I know like I two mean, or three nights ago one of the flag girls fell off and then they're like <laughs> catching her horse coming out of the arena I was like this is this is breck and marky's nightmare this is their nightmare <laughs> so you know the one with the flag girl every i don't i'm so sick and tired of social media and there everybody's want to put their opinions on there but i saw that flag girl fall off you know what my first thought was she's gonna get her ass trampled that's what my yeah, but all those are horses man yes i'm like oh my god and i think that, it's like john douch that caught it in the alley but he sees his horse like running up to him and he like looks off to the side and see there's no one like reaches down and grabs it yeah i mean uh being bucked off in the grand entry would be terrible but being on the ground during the grand entry after you got bucked off, knowing that there's like 30 more horses to come out that are wild and crazy, <laughs> that'd be terrifying too. So <clears throat> I don't know. So no grand entries for you. Moving on. No, moving on. I mean, I bet next, well, they won't, but maybe they should require helmets for that thing. <laughs> it's a... <laughs> You know, it's just, I think too, it's so many horses in like that small build, that building's pretty small and it's pretty electric. So it's Apparently it's not that electric oh. because they lost their power last night. So. Oh, they did? Yeah, the lights went out. Well, I seen that. I thought it was part of the show. I didn't know. Yeah. Hmm. So did you actually go to the rodeo then? We did mm -hmm. not go to the rodeo. This is the first year we haven't gone because I looked up tickets and I was like, yeah, you know what? I'd rather go to dinner than spend that on tickets. Yeah. Yeah, no. I feel like once you went to, it's like we well, we always go. We sit all the timed events in, and like tickets, I usually pay like two fifty four or five hundred, six hundred dollars this year. And I was like, I, yeah, I'd rather have a, like a good dinner and relax, and that's what we did. So, 
Um, so super funny story, folks. As most of you know, I, I'm the one who, I don't really like to shop. I, I haven't been shopping really since COVID up until this weekend. And um, at an actual department store is what I should say, or a mall. Uh, and Remy does not. Remy does not like to shop. Um, I Of the two of us, I'm the one who is probably more into clothes and wanting. I like that. Remy, not so much. And Remy spent the last couple of days at the NFR shopping, of all things. I'm like, I'm the one who likes clothes but and power shopping see people don't like to go shopping with me because like i know like the two or three booths i have to go to and like i can make it through the convention center top and bottom in an hour and a half and that's like including stopping and ordering the things i need to order at specific booths because like i haul ass i do not wait and if i see something i'm like oh i'm gonna go check that out and i like power walk in and look at it and then i power walk back out so Although if you want to, like, if you can, if you're going to go to Vegas and you can only want to hit one spot, I would go to the South Points um, shopping because it's better vendors. It's a super small area and um, you don't the have to walk. Plaza is like, a pretty small area too. <laughs> uh, you don't have to walk like 19 miles to see a yeah, lot of the same stuff. So. so many people and it feels like. Yeah, I think that's the other thing about South Point. Like it's a lot of the guys that are there for the roping. So it's it's just a different it's a different it's a different atmosphere there's like a lot more using tack as far as tack stuff um my hat guy is there so i got new hats and i got my other hats reshaped so i mean i i, I went shopping i got a jacket i got a lot of snaffles i got uh new hats some sunglasses and that's it and rain and she got recognized by somebody. I got recognized by like someone that I didn't know that watched us. That was the first one. And then in the bathroom, I got recognized by someone that didn't know either of us. So, cause usually it's like, oh, I'm friends with Breck. And, and she's like, oh my God, I've been watching you guys. I, I had to find you off of Facebook and go on YouTube. So that was fun. That was nice. Oh my God. Where were they from? They were from Oklahoma. Oh, funny. So neither one of them knew either they of us? They didn't know either of us, which is like, usually it's like, oh, I know Breck, and then I started watching you. That's hilarious. Way cool. Well, shout out to those girls. <coughs> shout out to them. Um, so we were kind of discussing last night via text, very short and sweet what we would talk about today and Remy said that she was kind of thinking because some other people just because of the holidays and all the expectations and the expectations that social media places on you sets and the opinions that people put on social medias of what you should be like or do during the holidays and I said same girl that's kind of what I'm thinking too because right now I'm getting so pissed off with everybody's like, why do people feel the need to put their opinions all over Facebook of people that we probably don't know? And even if we did, we probably shouldn't put them on Facebook yeah. like that. I don't know. I mean, I mean social media is a funny thing. It gives you a platform. Like, I mean, like this is a platform for you to say whatever you want. But like we used to call people like that telephone tough, right? They'd say they were gonna whip your ass over the phone and the next time you'd see them, they'd slink off. And that's kind of what you see a lot with social media is people, people forget. Are yeah, you know, they, they forget that again, words hurt, words have weight. So you can't say something without any justification. Like the other thing is you're putting it out there in the world and then it's out there forever, right? Like. You put it out there in black and white. You can't say that you were misunderstood. Like you took the time to type it out. It's out there. And even if you delete it, someone probably screenshotted it if it wasn't very nice. So um, it's social media is tricky, but it's, it's emboldened a lot of people and it's made people forget like just because you think it doesn't mean you should say it. Yeah. So the Rocker Steiner thing. Um, I, I'm gonna be honest. I think he got robbed a couple nights. I'd have been pissed by then too. So, and they act like I feel the same. I'm like, so this this kid, he is 
oh, I like his style. I think it's cool. I, I think that the vintage rocker cowboy, he says that he's not a cowboy. I like his vibe. Is he a spoiled brat? I have no idea. I don't know him. I don't care. Even if he, it, I mean, it's not, he's not my kid. I don't know him. He, I mean, you got to think about it too. So they didn't let him junior rodeo, right? Because they wanted to save him for, for the PRCA. So all these guys are going to say that he's tight entitled and spoiled. Think about something like this. Like he's been driven his whole life to do the best he can do at whatever sport he does. And then you go and make a really good ride the first night and they don't mark you. And they mark Casey Field really high on what I don't think. I didn't see the difference in those scores. It doesn't mean that Casey Field's not amazing. It just, it didn't look right. And same thing, you see kind of some grumblings on social media like, hey, they kind of messed up the bareback scoring. Not just for him, for a lot of guys. And then he makes another good ride. And then in the Eliminator pen, he rides one that is trashy and doesn't get scored for it. You're right. He's going to be mad because he's busted his ass to get that good. You don't get to the NFR being a spoiled brat, even if you are spoiled, right? You're the top 15 in the world. You busted your ass to get there, no matter what so What he, he said you. is he dropped the F-bomb. Well, I mean, <laughs> unfortunately, the F-bomb gets used pretty loosely in society today. We drop the F-bomb all the time. So who are we to say? But he said... What the F do you want from me? When he said, what do you want from me? I understand that. Yeah. That's frustration. That is frustration. The fact that people are just, that they, I mean, millions, every time I open Facebook to go post something, I see something pops up about him. And I'm like, gosh, you guys, you've never been in his shoes, I'm guessing. You, I can't imagine that if you've worked your ass off to get there, you wouldn't be frustrated too. And the camera had the opportunity to pan away from him, but they chose not to. So, so like when, when PBR started getting really big, this bothered me and it still bothers me. When the guys get bucked off and they follow them down the hall, you know, like they yeah. have that camera on them. Yeah. Dude, give them a break. Give them 10 minutes to get their life together. Like, that's a lot of money they just got bucked off for. Yeah. And so you're seeing an athlete, and I, I think that's the other thing, is like we hold rodeo athletes almost to a different standard. And part of it is they're not really professionally paid. Even if they're sponsored, they're not professionally paid. And you feel like you get to know these guys on a certain different level. But look, it's disappointing. And it's a lot of money. And yeah, if you had a bad day at work and someone had a camera on you, you're telling me that you wouldn't go sit in your office and cry? Or say, what the fuck? You know, like, you just... But again, And again, I think that's the other thing about social media. There's this weird moral superiority, right? Like, I would never do that. Yeah, you, I'm like... Would you never do that? Would you ever be in that situation? I would never do a lot of things because I would never be in that situation. Like, no. it's not a judgment for me. I'm just... The you know. only time I've actually called somebody out on... Like, I, I shouldn't say, like that I've taken to social media to um, voice my displeasure or uh, whatever on one of them people is Ty Murray. When Ty Murray is a huge agriculture influencer, he's a huge influencer for rodeo. People listen to him. He's got a ton of followers on social media. After the Kentucky Derby this year, he took to social media and um, basically fueled the fire for a bunch of people on the racehorse industry against the racehorse industry. And I felt like he could have handled that so much differently. Instead of taking to social media and telling everyone what was wrong with the racehorse industry, he could have taken to social media from a horseman's perspective and told his story of why and how they would handle that stallion like they did. But he did not. He used his voice to gain more followers to basically advocate to shut the industry down. And that pissed me off. You know, it's an industry that's already in a lot of trouble. The hard part, like, okay, so it's like a side story like always 
So they're getting rid of the pony rides in Griffith Park, which is up in Los Angeles, like the Los Angeles area, because it's not fair to the ponies and the ponies are overworked and all these things. And you see it, especially in, Cal it's not just a California problem. It will now become a national problem, but you see it here. So I always say that California's road to hell is paved with good intentions and it's true, right? So they don't want the ponies overworked. So now we're going to outlaw that instead of putting on more governmental regulation, which can be problematic in and of itself. But with, it's like the racehorse industry and the rodeo industry, all those industries are, even if you're, they're not your industry, all ag industries are interrelated because oh, when you lose, because when you lose ground in one of them, trust you me, another one will fall. Them. And it was like, I knew we were in trouble when Blackfish came out and they got SeaWorld to stop doing shows, right? Because SeaWorld circus. doesn't do shows. So that, you know, so SeaWorld leads to the circus going down. And the other thing is like, if you look at all the good that SeaWorld does, and you know, that's such a hard argument. Well, I did a lot of good so I can do some bad. No, I mean, you have these animals so that you can show the world what they're capable of, that they're empathetic, that they're feeling. You're using that venue to show what teaching. those animals, right? To, to teach and to rescue more animals. Yes. Like SeaWorld does so much good. But so SeaWorld goes down and then the circuses go down. And now the racetrack has already been under fire in California and it's under fire everywhere. So the racing industry is going down. Rodeo industry will follow. Hunters and jumpers will follow. All recreational horse sports will follow. All because you didn't stick together and you didn't educate the, and you didn't educate the public. And again, it's a slippery slope. So you see some bad happen, then everyone gets lumped together, and you have to be very careful. I see it a lot. Like I see it a lot in the cattle deal, right? organic and grass fed versus grain fed and I'm right, but you're not right. And let me again, find that moral high ground where I'm better than you, bro. We're all out here doing the same thing, trying to feed our families, trying to feed the world and like live a certain lifestyle. So be That's very careful saying that you're better than me because it le lets everyone else chink away at the industry as a whole, because if you can't get it together within there, we're in a lot of trouble. That is what pissed me off. About. And I, I did take to social media and I tagged him and I called him out. And I was just like, I wish that you would have used your platform to educate instead of join the movement of get on my bandwagon. Because he is a horseman. He should know. He came from the rodeo background. I wholeheartedly believe what you say, Remy, about you give them the power and the tools and the story to shut down the racing industry or the circus. It's just what's next. It gives, it fuels the fire. It feeds it. Does. The fire. You know, it's that slippery slope argument and people don't realize how quickly that slope gets slippery. Fast. You know, there's stuff happening. I, I didn't think I'd, I'd ever see happening, not just in California, across the country. And at a, at an increasing speed, it gain it gains ground much more rapidly than you think it's going to. And, um, yeah, it's a, it's dangerous, but again, social media is a dangerous, it's a dangerous tool. Like it's great, but it's also dangerous. It also lets everyone think that their truth is the right truth. And it I know is, we talk it makes people feel like shit. I feel like it does. I mean, and I think it's so, you know, and so that's pivoting away from the giant social media question of like rock or stuff of, of big people, right. Of big pu public figures. Cause that's easy to be upset about and then box it up and put it away because there'll be some new thing that will take over your newsfeed. But the more insidious part of social media, especially coming to the holidays, is having that per picture perfect life, right? The curated image. We talk about it a lot on here, but we're going to talk about it in more specifics today. The curated image of social media and um, why you, mm -hmm. it's, it's a new version of keeping up with the Joneses and you're faced with it every day, every time you open those apps. You see so perfection from someone else. Say, do you think, because I do, do you, maybe it's just my mindset or whatever, I, or like my life changed, so maybe my thought on it changed, but do you think that Christmas is not the same as it was, just say, 10 years ago? Because I, I actually think, so I don't think it's just about social media. I think that's about kids too. Like, 
you know, the magic of Christmas is that your parents loved you enough to take care of all those things. And now you're that person and God damn, it's a lot of work. It's a but lot of that Christmas I, because I don't know if it's just me or but I don't think it's just me because I feel like, like it used to be about the presents. I feel like for many, probably including myself. Um, but like, look at black Friday, Remy, like, I don't think you've ever been a black Friday shopper, but I used to do it. And it used to be, I mean, people were lined out to the parking lot and it was a crazy thing. It was fun to do. Um, yeah, none of that seemed fun to me. Ever. I know it was, uh, but, um, that like, I know that they kind of did away with it. Maybe COVID had something to do with it. I don't know, but it seems like people are going away from like gifting actual presents and doing more with like experiences or something like that. Is well, I, I mean, and I think that's good actually. Right. Like I do. I think it's amazing because like when we were little, right. Like Furbies were the giant thing, right? Like everyone wanted a Furby and you had, like people like parents, like punching other parents for a Furby. And before that was cabbage patch kids. Like, and then it was all the material things that your kids really want for the first three days that they have them. Yeah. You don't and remember then they don't remember them. But mm -hmm. if you can do an experience, if you can make, if you can go back to really what the spirit of Christmas is about, which isn't about giving gifts, you can make it a lot better. But the problem I think for women and for mothers in particular is when you, like you open your thing and it's like, this is how you make a garland and balloon arch for your front door in three easy <laughs> steps. And you look at it and you're like, you started filming at 5.30 in the morning and it's now midnight. It wasn't three easy steps. But, you know, like she's got like the blonde hair and the leggings and the puffy boots and everything looks cute and she looks perfect. Meanwhile, my front porch looks like a shit show because we had Santa Ana winds and we've been busy. So it all got blown together and got piled up, but I still haven't cleaned it. And I got my Christmas tree up and I got garland on two things, but I don't have it on the rest of the house. So now my one son makes me feel like an asshole because we haven't finished decorating for Christmas. Because That's hilarious for me. <laughs> I mean, from a, the hilarious in a good way. I used to be the person who like went mm -hmm. out. I think I might even wore an apron in my house and bake Christmas cookies, mm -hmm. somewhat looking like out of a Hallmark movie. That is like, I'm not that person anymore. We just put our tree up. It's... It's, and if you are genuinely that person, because I know some of those people that are genuinely that person, good on you. I wish I could awesome. be you. Go be I'm Mrs. Claus. It, Do all those things, but I can't feel guilty because I don't have that, right? Like, I don't feel guilty about that. You, but a lot of people, do, we're talking about that large. Are you feeling guilty? No, I don't feel guilty. I don't feel guilty about a lot of things. But a lot of people do, and that's what I was saying. So I've had a lot of people reach out about not feeling like they're enough, especially coming into the holiday season, right? And it's easy, especially if you don't have this big sense of value that you're not enough. And now you open Instagram, you open Facebook and it's the perfect house and they've got all their presents wrapped and they've already had them since like, I don't know, May and all their Christmas shopping's done. And now they're making charcuterie boards that look like Santa's sleigh. And meanwhile, you're trying to get your kids lunches packed and feel like you're something in comparison to the rest of the world. Well, you are something like, I mean, I got, I did. I got a lot of text messages lately about it. I'm like, you are something, you're something important. And I um, think that we should offer, like, we should do like a pre holiday, like come to the ranch and work with us women's retreat. Because yeah. I'm going to tell you, if we do that, like fucking charcuterie boards are out the window. You ain't going to be thinking about garland that you didn't get done. That you're going to be done. here with a Coors light in your hand and a smile. And you're going to be like, I, and, and you know, it shouldn't be stressful. So a couple years ago no. we switched because I grew up with a family that had like the giant Christmas Eve dinner with everybody. And then, um, and that kind of moved around between my mom and her sisters and my grandmother's house. And then we had, our family always hosted the giant Christmas dinner, which I told you, I think, I think it was Christmas where we had the scalloped potato debacle. And, uh, <laughs> but like, you know, we had the, we had those big things and as I got older and then my, my parents were divorced, James' parents were divorced. So now we're trying to fit in like 19 Christmases in two days. Yeah. And, um, a couple years ago, James was like, 
we're not going anywhere anymore on Christmas Eve. And I don't disagree with, and I, I mean, it was wearing me out. And then when you have kids, right, it's like, oh, you should come to my house for Christmas. It's like, no, you come to my house. I have little children. Like the magic of Christmas is Christmas oh, morning. Come. You come, you come. It's, it's, it's the same distance both ways, just so you know. And, uh, but a couple of Christmases ago, we decided like, so Christmas Eve, we do tacos and tamales. Anyone's invited to come over, but we do street tacos and tamales for Christmas on paper plates. Not and like my Christmas okay. dinner, I do like, like we do like the prime, right? We don't do prime rib. We do tri-tip. We do tri-tip and turkey and ham for Christmas dinner. I like those things. Again, it's not fancy. It's like, we don't have 19,000 sides. It's the meats and a couple vegetables and salad. But like Christmas Eve dinner is the most laid back because we just do street tacos and tamales and throw it all away in a giant blue trash bag when we're done. Because I am not going to make myself miserable Christmas Eve night and Christmas morning. And I just want to relax and have fun. So my family, you know, and I feel like I feel shitty because I don't go back for Christmas our Christmas with my mom and dad is always a weekend before Christmas. I mean, I've never missed a Christmas up until COVID hit. And now we haven't been back for three years. But anywho, um, you know, my mom is housing. You know, they have the big Amish house. So I've got two sisters that are married. Each sister has two kids. Uh, their kids are married and they their kids have kids. So you got what? Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine people that come from my one sister's side. One, two, three, four, five, six that come from my other sister's side. My brother's got two boys, and one of them is married. So there's five. And then we used to show up. So there's another four. My mom and dad, that's a lot of people under one yeah. roof. You guys for two days. It's a lot of peopling for me. Oh my god. No, and I, uh, I but you know, I, I it's like James always jokes, he's like, I always want to go to like Maine for Christmas to have like the cabin in the snow. And I was like, we'd probably be miserable there too. <laughs> like because it's never gonna be the picture of what you put in your brain, right? Yeah. It's not the I Hallmark wouldn't. movie, it's not the picture, it's not the social media picture, it's you waking up to make sure everything gets done and everyone has a good time. So we were in Colorado last year for Christmas. That was, it was fun. It was just the four of us, but this year we're staying home and then we're going to go snowboarding afterwards. But again, like as we come into the holiday season, it's dark earlier. So you're going to have some seasonal depression going on, whether you're chipper or not. Like just, this is like the weather that makes you want to nap and go to sleep. at like five o'clock. You know, I will say, were you a morning person before we started doing this? No, not at all. And now, like, I can't sleep in and it bothers me because I just want to sleep. In. I did sleep in yesterday. That was nice. I slept in yesterday. But no, now I'm like, I was early. tired this morning. But I was not, I was not, I would, I mean, I had to be a morning person, but I was not a, what I would describe as a willing morning person. I'm, I'm getting to be a willing morning person and I love the mornings. I, generally get up around 5 to 5 30 this morning i couldn't i like, please for the love of god i'm tired for me um yeah i don't know i think i like spending the time by myself to be quite honest. i think that's what i like is like in the morning there's no one up there's no one that needs something from you like you just kind of get to like putter me around too. and do your stuff without someone watching you or judging you but you know i think um I think social media is tough too. The other thing like that you see is like, so it's like the elf on the shelf deal. Like I'm not an elf mom. I used to do it. I no, used to I'm do not. all the Christmas stuff and I quit cold Turkey. You guys, it can be yeah. done. And it's one of those things where it's like, I know that it's magical for some people. For me, it's just one more list, one more thing on my list that I have to do. And like my list is already long. So again, going back to the curated image, right? Like I love, I love people's Christmas cards. Like I do. I love people's Christmas cards. Do you cards. do them? I, okay. So shout out to Christine. She takes my Christmas pictures every year. And I think I've sent it. I've got boxes of unsent Christmas cards. I love it. That's me as well. 
I and so I, I now she takes my pictures. I make my post on social media. And I'm like, hey, Merry Christmas. We love you guys. I didn't address anything, so here's my updated photo. But I love people's Christmas cards, and Christine's pictures are actually great because she, I mean, she's a phenomenal photographer. But she just posted her Christmas picture, and it's great because her one daughter's like halfway sticking out her tongue, her other one's got like resting bitch face, and I love it. I it's love like, that. That is it's that not... kid. Anyway, that is that girl. She's hilarious. But like when you look at her, she's like, and so I like hers because it's very genuine, right? It's a genuine picture. But then I get some people's and I'm like, I know you in real life. This is not you. This isn't even the idealized version of you. Like, I don't know what you did to make that picture work out, but that's not you. Like, I love the shit show pictures. I love the, hor like, not the horrible ones, but the ones where you see everyone's personality and it doesn't look like a catalog picture. Well, um, talking about this whole Christmas thing, I was that woman. Like, I'm not kidding you, Remy. Like, the women that you're talking about or trying to get me to talk about I was that woman like um did the organized bake days to make the Christmas cookies uh did the elf on the shelf thing her name was Jingles um we went to the Santa train every year we followed it around to see where it would be so we went to the what is it Burlington Northern Santa train thing we did an old time Christmas. We used to go cut down a Christmas tree. We did this every year up until three years ago. All of those things, plus a lot more. I was really into buying of all the things and the presents for everyone. I cut it all off cold turkey. In fact, it doesn't even, I used to decorate the whole house. I used to decorate the outside. I used to buy hundreds of dollars worth of that, um, What's it called? The pine tree shit. Garland. No. That's Garland. Spruce tips or whatever. The tips. The tips. Oh, yeah. Yes. And I used to do all of it. Like, I had pots that I, and ribbon. The ribbon. Hundreds of dollars on ribbon. I don't do any of it anymore, Remy. I mean, like, of... look, we uh, string lights around our entire ranch. We do a lot of, like, James likes to be Clark Griswold. I get set up in the tractor bucket to wrap our giant, um, bell gates with red and white lights so they look like candy canes so I we do it. a lot of it i just it happens in phases and then sometimes doesn't come down for three months but you did it i don't know i, I mean but and again there's nothing wrong with being that person there's no. nothing wrong with being that person there's, there's nothing, nothing wrong, wrong with being either. happy doing all those things but again to our our viewership if you don't want to do those things it does not make you less of a mother it does not like make you less of a wife it doesn't make you less no. of a woman it doesn't make you less of anything if you're not happy and you're doing it well that's really counter productive to being in the christmas spirit if you want to go make a tumbleweed snowman instead of a real snowman go do it like you know yeah my, um, no. it's the memories at the end of the day it doesn't it doesn't matter if you put up the Christmas lights or you do the garland or you bake the cookies. What matters is that you went and spent some time with the ones that you loved and made a memory with them that you will always remember. Is that not right? Yeah, no, uh, that's, uh, it's a hundred percent right. Because the other thing too, like, and this is a bigger, this is a bigger thing at large. And again, it goes back, it does go, and it go back to social media. I have a friend who, um, it's her, it's both of their second marriages and his first wife is very successful at a lot of things. And she always feels like she's being compared to that. And I go, well, he chose to be with you. You've chosen a different life than she has. And what she's doing maybe is great for her. Do you want the things that she has as far as what she's doing with her life? And she goes, no, and then stop worrying about it. I go, does he say things to you about being those things? She goes, no. I said, again, stop worrying about it because now you've made yourself worry, like you've worried yourself sick over something that you don't even want to be, but you see the comparison on social media to like, and she's doing it to herself, right? She goes and looks at what the wife's doing or the ex-wife's doing. It's like, well, why am I not doing that? Well, yeah. that's not you anyway. Like, that's not no. what you want. Those aren't the things you want. So why are you worried? Because she has a different kind of success than you do. And again, it comes back to how do you measure success? Well, we've talked about 
how we measure success has changed drastically from when we were younger. So if you're happy doing what you're doing, just be happy doing it. It doesn't matter that you are not what someone else is. So for me personally, like I'm much, I'm a better person to the people in my lives that I truly love. If I don't get all whipped up, I would get all whipped up if I were to go all out for Christmas and make sure that it really felt like Christmas here, like it did in Minnesota. I can't do that because I, I will become crazy. It'll make me crazy. I'll be unhappy. Do you know what I mean? Because that's yeah, because it's not you're... who I am anymore. So I'm a much better, like, I don't want it to be the same either. It is yeah, different. Yeah, and I, I think that's what, that's part of growing up too. I really think that's part of growing up. I, um, I think you grow out of certain things, right? Like wanting to be like wanting to have the perfect house or wanting to have the, per you know, all these things as markers of your family success as markers of your own personal success. And again, for some people, that's what they want. So have at it. That's not a judgment for me, but it's not for me. Like that's not my, that's not my jam, but if it makes you happy, let it make you happy. But again, make it make you happy because you have so many people like, uh, I had another girlfriend that I was talking to and we were, she was talking about like, same thing. You see all these women on social media, right? It's like, I wake up at four 30 and I exercise and then I pack the bento box lunches. And then I make sure that I give my husband a blow job before he leaves to work and the house is perfect. And then I go to my job and I work and I make, you know, multi millions. But he, by the time he comes home, I got dinner on the table and then we're ready for sex and my kids are in bed on time. And you're like, whose fucking life are you living? Who yeah. did you pay to make all that happen? Because I he must like, be a robot. Right? But you see this, right? You see that, like, especially if you're on, like, a certain side of TikTok, you see these women, and I was like, good on you, man, but fuck, you must be tired. <laughs> and I think you got to be on cocaine to make that all happen, like, uh, or a legalized version of it. Yeah. I... And so, But again, like, when you feel that pressure, just take, just like you with the rain, right? When you feel that pressure, take a breath. Yeah. You're enough. Like I'm guilty of it too. You know, like, well, what are you going to do? You can't. And I think that we all are so guilty of that. Like, what are like, you going to do? Uh, so, uh, my awesome girl gang for my birthday gave me a dragon cup. Oh, I have an amazing girl gang. Uh, and they're like, oh, for slaying dragons. And it's true. Right. Like I have, I, ha I had a big breakdown a couple weeks ago and everyone had to pick me back up, but that's okay. And, um, you know, all I was saying when I opened the card, though, was like, some days I don't want to slay dragons, right? You know, though, that because of what we think in our head that we need to be and do for everyone, that is why we all break down. Yeah. It, you know, when my one, the one of one of my girl gang goes, I'm telling you things you already know. She goes, I'm telling you things you've told me. Like, and it's hard to give you advice because you know all of these things to be true. So even for me, I have to be like, I am enough. People love me. I love me. I am enough. But like, I, I mean, I love my dragon cup, but I, I had to think about that. I was like, you know, I, I don't have to slay dragons every day. We like, make the choice to do it. We do. I, I make the yeah. choice to be what I am. But I was like, and it was a good reminder for me. Like, I don't, I don't have to go slay dragons today. I can just take a breath and not do that. But you know, the ho and then the holidays like heighten everyone's emotions. Like not only is it cold and it's dark, so you got to do stuff like in the light and then there's never enough daylight. But the other thing too is like, there's a lot of big, heavy emotions. Kids are tired. They're excited. Your family's excited. Like, and all of that drains on you. If you, it drains on you, even if you don't let it, but you have to be very aware of all the, all the extra heightened emotions in the air. And, and then your kids are at home for two weeks and not at school. So you don't have a break. Well, your kids are at home all the time now. So, you know, and actually, I mean, I know, like, I feel like I'm going to jinx myself because we're still so new into it, but, um, it's been good. It's been really good. Like, well, I've said it so many times, but, my older one, Remy, 
um, he's just growing up and he's so helpful. He's both of them have been like, just so good and dedicated to doing their schoolwork and working ahead so they can, there's just a bigger sense of responsibility than I've ever noticed in the last year, I would say. And we laugh a lot. My kids are so damn inappropriate. And it comes from me. They are funny. They are really funny. And yeah, life is by no means perfect. By no means. Um, but it's been good. So. No, and you know, I, I think, again, it's growing up. It's figuring out. The biggest freedom I think I ever found was when I stopped. And I didn't, again... This goes back to, I was different, right? I didn't grow up comparing myself to people. And then I fell into that trap. But then growing out of it again, like if I'm happy and I'm proud and I'm enough for myself. It helps everybody else around. It helps everyone else. And that's what I told my one girlfriend. I said, you can't be a good mother if you're worried about everything else. You can't because, because you're short with them. And I, I'm. Yeah. Like well, we're all, we're, and we're all guilty of it. Still am. Right? Yes. But like when you're trying to meet some expectation and even if everything looks picture perfect, if you are miserable, your kids feel that you're miserable. They yeah. know you're upset and then they feel like it's their fault. Well, you don't need to put that guilt on them. Like just go make yourself happy and everything else will um, kind of line itself out. I was reading this one thing about um, relationships and this woman said when she stopped focusing on her husband, about what he did wrong and what he did right and just focused on herself that everything got better. And it's true because like, I think as the mom and the wife, you're always trying to manage, you're trying to manage their expectations. You're trying to manage your expectations. You're trying to manage everyone's life. You're trying to do everything. And then you get lost again in the middle of it. And you feel like a failure because something didn't go right. Again, just like the rain flooding your arena, some stuff just doesn't go your way and you can't help it. Yep. And, uh, you know, but we, we are coming to the holidays. It's the season for toxicity. There's people that you have to be around that you didn't necessarily want to be around. And that's the other thing, right? Like we make a lot of stuff right for the holidays, right? Like, New year, they can change. We can <laughs> love this person and, and be in proximity to loving them. And then they say stuff and you're like, you're an asshole. There's a reason I haven't seen you for a year. <laughs> right. But like you do that because you're like, oh, it's the holiday season. Everything will be great and I will oh, love everyone and everyone will love me. But like, there's some people that, man, you can't love them enough. They can't love you enough. It's not worth the like forced interaction and, uh, you know, your friends are the family you choose. So I, I, I tend to spend more time with my friends than, than any, I mean, actually I don't, I spend a 10 more, spend more time working. And then if you want to be my friend, you come along with me. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't even know what we're doing for Christmas yet. I really have no ideas. I don't, I used to just buy for the sake of buying. I'm over that. I like to do the memory thing now. Um, I have nothing. I have something in mind, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. And the other thing too is like, so we're big on cooking. Like I love to cook, so that's not a thing. But I, I, I did see something that's like, there's no shame in buying your Thanksgiving, which will now be turkey, you know, it will now be Christmas dinner and spending that time, like pre-buying your food and spending that time with your family rather than slaving in the kitchen. Now for us, like the way our house is built, we all hang out in the kitchen anyway. So cooking is not, it's just one more thing you're doing while you're in the kitchen. But um, yeah, if you're not happy cooking, don't make yourself miserable. <laughs> also, if you don't cook all year, I don't know why you think a giant family holiday is the time to try cooking. Like you think about that. <laughs> uh, um, I saw a TikTok and it was a catering van in the driveway. It was kind of like parked off to the side and the kids came home and the mom opens the door and she's got her apron on and she's like, oh, honeys, how are you doing? And they're like, don't even freaking try to fool us, mom, that you've been out here slaving all the food all day. We see the <laughs> catering truck in the yard. So, well, I better get going here. I'm not sure what's going on outside, but it sounds loud and meaning my attention. Yeah, well, 
I have a rooster in with my chickens and they're supposed to all be pullets, but they're not. So I, I can hear him going and uh, <laughs> have a full day of lessons. So good luck in Vegas. I hope you win all the money. We have to get there first, Remy. And I'm like, you know, I get, I'm, I'm a homebody. So it is what it is. Well, good luck to Brandon. He'll get there. He'll get there. He'll get there. He got out to get the cattle. He'll get out there. <laughs> yeah, he lives for this. So, well, thank you guys. Um, we'll see everybody next week. And don't stress too much over the holidays. Enjoy it. All right. Bye. Bye, guys.